Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ripley Presbyterian Church. We're so happy to have you who are joining us inside our sanctuary today. And those of you joining us in your sacred space, worshiping with us virtually today. This is the day our Lord has made for worship, for rest, for renewal in our faith and strength for our journey in life. What a gift this holy day is to us. We pray that we will be drawn more in-depthly to the loving grace of our Lord as we worship and made more in his image to serve this world. Before we begin our worship time, let's share in any announcements or prayer concerns that you all would like to lift up here verbally in our sanctuary and those of you who are joining with us remotely, please post any prayer concerns you have online this morning as well. Um, we do have other announcements as well that we'll mention. Uh, our July mission focus, once again, I have shared with some of you, has been together for TIPA. Our goal was $500 for our mission emphasis for Together for TIPA. Not sure where we are at this point, but I think we're probably getting close. And there may be some others who want to contribute to that mission throughout this week. But once again, this is our opportunity to share resources financially above and beyond our tithes and offerings to impact our community and the world around us through Christ's love. So if you want to know the portion of your gift, just say for the mission goal of the month, you can do that or write a separate check, ever how you want to give. This makes us, one more way, it makes us a tithing congregation. What a joy it gives me to say that, meaning that at least 10% of our resources go out from this congregation to others in our community, in the world, to share the love of Christ. Thank you for helping us impact this community and this world through the love of Christ. Uh, other announcements, we will, uh, uh, we're continuing to have our Sunday school. Glad to have you all joining with us. Uh, grateful for Elizabeth and BJ and Hannah and Grace Ann who are all providing leadership. Uh, and uh, those, uh, that class meets at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, as does our adult Sunday school class. It meets, it starts at 9.30 or 10. 9.30 over in the uh, Greg Center. So join with us for those. And then for those of you joining us virtually and those of you here that would like to participate in our online Bible study, join us on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, we did not have our meeting this past week, but we'll continue that again this week. We'll all be back in the saddle. So uh, join us at 6 p.m. You can follow and uh, join along on Facebook Live. Or if you'd like to watch that later in the week, you can also do it at that time as well. Uh, the leadership is uh, Dr. Norris Howell, Elder Jennifer Huddleston, myself, and Elder Lynn Hill. So we look forward to having you all joining us for our virtual Bible study on Wednesday nights. Okay, dear friends, are there any other announcements that we want to share before we... Uh, we do have our congregational meeting coming up next Sunday. And uh, that meeting will be for the purpose of selecting trustees to represent our congregation. And uh, they have been uh, nominated from the session to have Norris Howe and Kenny Hill. And uh, trustees that were for formerly those positions were held by Elvin Huddleston and Leon Bailey, two of our dear beloved saints who have gone to glory. We will be uh, selecting new trustees on behalf of our congregation. Uh, I thought we had a session meeting that Sunday. We don't have a session meeting next Sunday, though, do we? Okay. We have a session meeting after the congregational meeting? Okay, great. We'll verify all that. We'll talk among ourselves and get all that straightened out. But um, there will be, for sure, congregational meeting immediately following worship. Any other announcements now? that you all would like to share before we lift up joys and concerns for our worship community. Okay, on our prayer list today, uh, we do want to add uh, Miss Carson Meeks 
Uh, she is uh, a young lady who's a senior in high school at Ripley, and uh, she's the daughter of our beloved friend Sonny Meeks, and just drew a blank on Sonny's wife's name. Karen, yes, how can I forget that? Karen and Sonny, we are praying for you and Carson, and she'll be having a uh, uh, procedure on her heart tomorrow in an effort to repair, repair a hole in her heart. So uh, we'll be lifting up you all and praying for you uh, throughout that procedure and the healing process. Uh, other updates or additions to the prayer list. Just see the family of Fred Moore, beloved pillar in our community and uh, uh, co-worker with uh, Bobby and others in the ministry and uh, outreach in our community through his faithful service through the People's Bank. Probably, I guess, the longest serving board member at this time. He was at his passing. Beautiful man and family. Are there other prayer concerns we want to lift up? You may uh, smell like uh, there's a bit of an odor in here this morning. If something's burning and we're still on this side of glory. So thanks be to God for that. But we're having some issues with our audio system. So I'm going to use my preacher voice extraordinaire today. If I seem that I'm talking a little more loudly than normal, uh, that's because I'm not mic'd up. But I want to make sure that everybody can hear me good. Um, so we, uh, we do celebrate. That's a joy that we found that issue, and we'll be getting that repaired here soon. Well, friends, let us now join together in worship with one another, our God, and for his glory. beautiful old hymn there that Lynn played for us, Sweet Hour of Prayer, and that is what we will be participating in throughout our worship, a time of prayer and regeneration for us as God's children. To prepare our souls more fervently for worship, let us reflect on these words from the psalmist. I'll read a portion of Psalm 107 that's printed in your bulletin for our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Friends, join me in responding to that call, that invitation to worship our God by standing together and let us share in a hymn of praise 
number 555. And join with me as we consider our sinfulness and our gracious God's forgiveness as we pray together now a prayer of confession. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, in whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses, and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength through Jesus Christ, your Son. listen closely to these words of forgiveness and life from Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions, our sins from us. 
Friends, join me in celebrating this declaration of forgiveness by standing and sharing together in a hymn of praise, number 579. This time, let's have the young disciples to join me down front this morning. They're coming from down here and upstairs and all around from east and west. Hello, Miss Hannah. Thank you, my dear. It would make my stomach hurt if I ate it all, wouldn't it? 
That's exactly right. Now, that was so sweet of you that you didn't say you'd have a fatter belly. That was so nice of you. I would have a fat belly. Mommy would say I would have a fat belly if I ate all the candy. So it wouldn't be good for me. And guess what? I enjoy getting to see y'all smile and you be happy when I share what I have with you. So how about that? So let's in it. Yep. Let's every day try not to be greedy, but share with others so that we feel better and they feel better and know the love of Jesus. Yeah. Well, share something like I understand. And I don't I struggle with that too, Elizabeth. We all do. It's not fun to share sometimes. It's hard to, isn't it? But let's all remember how good it makes us feel when we share and how good we're making others feel. Okay? How about that? Let's pray again. God, we thank you for reminding us that when we share, even though it's it's sometimes tempting for us to want it all ourselves, but when we share, we make others feel better and ourselves, and we make this world know the love that you give us by loving, by sharing, and giving of ourselves. We thank you for these young disciples. What a gift they are, that their families would share them with us to allow us to pour life and love into them. And oh, what life and love do they pour into our church. They are the greatest, you tell us, in the kingdom of heaven. So help us to not only teach them, but to learn from them as we serve this world through your love and for your glory. In Christ's name, amen. All right, I get to share today. Have some candy, friends. Y'all better get uh, Walter a piece, too, because he still, he went back with Dad. He, he said, I got to go. Oh, I got you, y'all. Here you go, Hannah. Uh, Elizabeth, do you want a bulletin, baby? I'll give you one. This morning's first reading comes from the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 3. If you'd like to follow along, it's in your pew Bible on page 201. So beginning at chapter 3, verse 1. So if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free but Christ is all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we bow in your presence, grateful to be in worship. In the busyness of life and family and work, to pause on this holy day, to count our blessings, to consider your goodness in the midst of adversities, challenges, hardships, and even persecutions, your faithfulness and love is without end. Even as we come and worship, O oh God, to proclaim your goodness and glory, we come hungering 
yearning to be molded and made more in your image, to be taught your ways more thoroughly. And to do even that, oh God, we need your help. Will you, Holy Spirit, give us the ears to hear this day, the hearts to receive, and then the courage to go forth as your hands and feet and provide light and love to this world of darkness and hate. Come, O oh God. Right now in the holiness of this worship, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable unto you. For you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our Redeemer, Christ Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading for today is from the book of Luke in chapter 12. Uh, you can find that reading if you'd like to follow along on page 74. I'll begin this reading on, uh, excuse me, with verse 13 and continue down through verse 21. Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 13. Listen with me for the word of the Lord. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend who sent me to be a judge or arbitrator over you. And he said to him, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the, the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, I will do this. I will put down my barns and build larger ones. And then I will store all of my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. We say those words every week in worship. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, but can I confess a little bit in the pulpit today? Sometimes I'm a little more thankful for these words than at other times. Sometimes I take to the words of Scripture a little more enthusiastically than other times. And this is one of those days that I'm a little less enthusiastic little less eager to grasp hold of these words that Jesus and the Apostle Paul used to challenge us and maybe even provoke us to walk more in the ways of Christ. So I want y'all to join with me in suffering through this text today. I want you to join with me and help me work through the restlessness of this challenge of faith that Jesus is placing upon us as we listen for a message God may give and be giving to us collectively and individually for our greater good and His greatest glory. As I share with our young disciples this morning, the, the overall, it seems, pressing urgency of Jesus' parable today seems to be challenging us with that word greed. As Hannah said so eloquently, 
in our young disciples' time. When we're greedy, we don't want to share. No, it was Elizabeth that said that. That's right. We don't want to share at those times. Well, I feel that pain a lot, do y'all? I don't always want to share. And, and Jesus... He confuses me in this text because he begins by saying to this brother who's wanting to get everything straightened out. He wants fairness in his family, right? And, and he asked Jesus to help him out. And then Jesus said, well, well who made me a judge between y'all? Why has your problem got to be my problem? And I thought Jesus would be all behind this guy because he wanted fairness, right? And Jesus gets on to him as, as much as the other. As if to say these challenging words that I'm having a hard time with today. Not only, maybe Jesus is saying, not only does the offender, your brother, need to be more gracious, but maybe you, the offended, also need to be more gracious. Oh, my, that's a whole level of meddling that I don't want to get into today, friends. I don't like the possibility of what Jesus may be saying to me through these words of Scripture. He speaks of greed, as does Paul in the letter to the church in Colossae. And you know, this is not a new way belief system, this challenge of us to give and live beyond ourselves, to share who we are abundantly as Christ did with us. In fact, it's one of the original commandments, right? We call it another word. Uh, the commandments did. It was, it was the word idolatry, right? Idolatry means to be consumed with only what we have, making gods out of our things, our stuff, wanting more and more and entrusting it for our fullness in life and it will leave us empty, idolatry will. That comes from greed. So Paul and Jesus challenge us with these words, and then Jesus transitions and he tells this parable of this person who says, I, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this barn for all of my stuff. And then at the end of the day, the Lord says, whose stuff's it going to be because you can't take it with you? Right? We've all heard that story. But there's a twist in this text. As I studied some of the commentaries preparing for this week's sermon, there is a connection of this parable told by Jesus about the earthly person building the barns for who? For himself and how Joseph, the faithful one of God, built barns to serve others. Remember the story of Joseph? Joseph, the one who was betrayed by his brothers, left for dead, who was taken into Egypt, sold as a slave, and rose to the second highest position in the land and was overseeing all of the grain. When a drought came, what Joseph do? He built barns to store up grain for the multitude. Do you see the difference? Jesus is saying we have choice. Are we building only for ourselves? Or are we building for others and most of all for God's glory? See, that's what happens. When we live outside of ourselves, these young disciples, I don't know if they preached to y'all this morning, but they did to me. Elizabeth told me, and Hannah seconded, if I eat too much candy, if I eat the whole basket, my stomach's going to hurt. And I'm going to get a fatter belly. It's not good for us to live only unto ourselves. And when we do, we miss the joy of living also for the other, through God's love and for God's glory. This is called faith. The challenge of this text this day, and 
Not only does Jesus call us to live beyond ourselves, but you know what? Thanks be to God, he and Paul in these texts tell us how to do it. Now there's these confusing words, as Jennifer read to us, where the writer, the teacher, Paul says, we need to die to ourselves. Or we need to die to those things that can kill us. Well, that makes sense, right? You want to avoid things that can harm you. Now, I love animals. And, and there's hardly an animal I would hurt except for a snake. Now, boy, if that's a bad snake, he better look out. My sweet little memo, Gladys, one of the greatest saints to ever walk this earth, she would chop a snake's head off in a heartbeat and not think twice about it. Why? Because she knew it could hurt you. Paul is saying to us, there are things that we need to die to. This list of sins that Paul gives us, he says, you need to turn from these things. Why? Because they're going to lead to your destruction. But not only does he tell us a list of things we need to die to, but to, to, to know the true joy of life and salvation, the abundance of joy even now, Paul tells us what to live to. As does Jesus. To become a new creation. Right? Remember I spoke about that new creation a few weeks ago? How do we become a new creation in life? Well, if we think about our first creation, there was birth. There's birth. There's life in creation. In Christ, we are a new creation or a new life. So when we have life, we have what? We have family. When we were born, we were part of a family, right? So is it in the challenge of this text today, Jesus saying to us, if we're a new creation, Lynn, if we're a new life, Austin, does that mean we have, when we are in Christ, a new family? I think that's what Paul is saying, Jen. When he says these words, very familiar to those in Galatians, there's no longer what? Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free, Kathy. There's no longer barbarian or Scythian. You know what those mean? Barbarians like a hillbilly, kind of like me. They were uncultured people in that century. The Scythians or Scythians, or ever how Jennifer said it, they were more rogues and ruffians. They ascended from the territory of what we would know as Russia now. They were uncouth, barbaric. And here, Paul is saying, through Christ, we are all one family, a new creation. See, I think that, Joey, is at the root of what Jesus is saying to us. How do we live beyond ourselves, Christ? We live beyond ourselves when we see the other as our brother, the other as our sister. One family in Christ. Not easy to do, right? I saw a, a sign yesterday. Luke and I went to play golf at the links in Oxford sounds fancier than it is. And as we were driving in, there was a sign there. Because all these crazy college, college kids like Graceland, they drive like maniacs. No, Graceland was a good driver. She wasn't like Luke Hill. But those kids fly through that golf course, headed to play golf. And there was a sign that said this, drive like your kids live here. See, that makes a difference when it's ours. It changes our behavior, doesn't it, Mike? And I believe that is at the heart 
of what Jesus is calling to us in this text today. Live as though they're yours. Your children. Your parents. Your brother. Your sister. Your family. I attended a couple of funerals this week in my capacity as president of the seminary and one I preached at and one I worshipped at as, as an attendee. And at one of the funerals, my colleague was preaching the sermon and leading the worship for the funeral of his brother, his earthly brother. His brother had been in and out of incarceration addicted to drugs throughout his life. He'd embraced a life of crime and rebellion, in many ways forsaking his family. There wasn't a lot of good in him. In fact, my colleague said, you know what? My brother could be a pain in the behind. No, no, I don't think he said he could be. I believe he said, my brother was a pain in the behind. He said, but here's the truth. So am I. So are you. And if not for the grace of God, none of us could be part of the family. See, the difference the love and grace of our Lord. And that's the call for us, dear church, to embrace the other as our family, part of the heavenly creation, claimed by God as his own. And commission to claim the other in the same way. This week we knew a pain also in the behind of our community. A horrific event where a person, without going into great detail, mistreated some young people in our community by his actions and his words. And the family family of those young people, they, they responded with anger as I would have, right? They responded like the brother in this text today, I want what's fair. You see, that's what we often want. Hurt me, Randall, and I'll deal with it, but hurt the ones I love, and I'll deal with you. That's the temptation, right, in us. And I get it. I get it as we as a community try to figure out how do we respond as the light of Christ in dark situations. But even as there were feelings of much anger and seeking for justice by many by these horrific actions, I was inspired by the responses of the offended, the children. I saw a news story on Channel 5 from Memphis. I want to quote it because I want to get it right from two of the young men who are impacted most by these actions. And this is what they said. Quoting one, I was never taught to hate someone. I don't have hate in my heart. Everybody makes mistakes, but you can always talk to God and get forgiveness. See, I'm troubled by what those kids said. Because they're challenging me to live beyond what's fair and to live 
with grace. Friends, when the world offends us, when the world's a pain in our behind, when people make outlandish comments and actions that reflect hate, we have a choice. Do we respond in kind or do we respond with grace? I want to learn to be more like these kids and respond with grace because, friends, I believe that's the only hope for our community and for our world. If we respond to the knuckleheads around us as knuckleheads, we're not going to change them, right? We'll just solidify their feelings all the more. But if we somehow embrace the words of Jesus today as he said to the other brother, I don't only need the offender to be more gracious, but I need you, the offended, to be more gracious. Friends, when we do that, and if we can do that, you want to make this world look more like Christ. You want to change the hearts and minds of the evil people among us. You want to transform this community to a true reflection of the light and love of Jesus Christ then. We have chance to say, look what the Lord has done in me and what I want to do for you. That, I believe, with every fiber of my core, is what it means to be rich toward God. To give of ourselves to his people as though they are our people. Because through his love, we are one. Amen. Friends, I invite you to remember what it is that you believe as a child of God and a gift of Christ. To do that, we affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. So I invite you now to stand with me and remember with me what it is that we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, friends, let us continue to affirm our faith, to respond with our faith, by giving of ourselves and sharing together in God's tithes and our offerings.
God, we thank you for this day of worship, for you working in us these words of life, even as we come to proclaim your glory in worship. We're grateful for the opportunity to give of ourselves, to share these offerings, the offerings, and we ask your blessings upon them, that they will be used in ways beyond we can, what we can even imagine glorify your kingdom and share your love. We pray for the ministry of our congregation. Continue to help us to grow, O oh Lord, to be the most welcoming congregation in this community to all of your people, meeting them where they are, regardless of their story, for they are a child of grace, just like us. We pray not only for our congregation or even our denomination, but wherever your gospel is practiced and proclaimed, will you inspire, will you empower your people in ministry? We pray for our nation, for our state, for our leaders throughout the world who seek together and uh, yearn to live out like Micah to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly in your way. We pray for our county and city governing bodies, for everyone who has power and authority over others, God. Guide them in the right paths, even when they know nothing of it. We pray for our economy. Continue to make us a nation and individuals who are blessed financially, and as we are blessed, help us to live beyond ourselves to further your love and your glory in this world. We pray, O oh Lord, for every person we've missed, listed today for special prayer and the names that are on our prayer list, those who are going through surgical procedures, those who are grieving, those who are facing illnesses physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, eternally. You are the great physician. Will you bring healing and wholeness to your children as we pray for each and every one? Now, God, in the holiness of this time, we pray for ourselves. Each person right now is praying for us, and we're praying for everyone else. You know our, our wants. You know our sins. You know our desires. You know our shortcomings. You know our yearnings for healing and wholeness. You are the great physician. Will you pour miracles of grace into our individual lives? Forgiving us, molding us, and making us more like you. Answering our prayers, our hearts, and our wants, and our needs when they can be accordance with your holy plan. Will you pour forth miracles of grace? We pray for friends and family. All those you've entrusted us to most of all. And help us to be family to everyone around. Help us, O oh God, to practice the grace in this community that you've given to us as we share your light and love. And now as your children, we join our voices as one and say together in prayer the words you taught us, saying and praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let's share in our hymn of response the first four verses of number 391. <laughs>
saints of the faith and recipients of God's grace, receive with me now God's blessing for us as his children. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his gaze upon you, and give you peace now and forevermore.